this video, I'm going to answer a very important question. How do I score a 9 to 10 in self -up writing? I'm not only going to answer that, I'm going to demonstrate that with a real example in front of you on the screen. This kind of question, and in the exam, you have 27 minutes for task 1 to reach a 9 to 10, and I'll do it in a much faster time, and I'll show you how you can do it so quickly and get a 9 to 10 for this answer. We will have a checklist later on for advanced vocab where we can check everything and make sure we actually get a 9 to 10. Then we have a CLB 10 plus checklist. How can you score 11 to 12? Now that is going to be part of my very next video coming up in two days. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and you will be notified about that video. However, it's very important you understand that in order to get to 11 or 12, you got to get to 9 to 10 first. And for most of you, this requirement is enough for your immigration. So let's have a look at the question. Let's practically actually write an answer and show you guys how to get it done in the real exam. Here's the question and we'll get into the sample answer. You're interested in volunteering at a community center but need more information uh, about the available opportunities, schedules and requirements. Then we have the generic 150 to 200 words. My focus is more always on the bullet points. So let's see what the bullet points are saying. Mention your interest in volunteering in any specific areas you're interested in. Request details about the available opportunities, the schedules and requirements. Express your enthusiasm for getting involved and ask about the next steps. Perfect. Okay. First thing you want to do is understand it's formal. So you want to write Mr. or Miss. And this is always what I say, Mr. Alexander, my favorite name, especially something just to get us started because the question is not saying write to a specific person. So you make up a name. In self if you want to keep it personal. So we're not saying to whom it may concern or anything else. Now, I'm going to also start with my template. And this is just the first few words. You get them in there and you feel better because I have written something. Time is running out, but I got something in there. Later on, I'll think more on how to structure this. But let me get my words here, my standard words. The purpose of my writing today is to, and also throughout this writing, I'm going to keep checking my words down here, which I think you cannot see on the screen. But yeah, we'll move it later and double check. Um, maybe you can do it here. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we'll we'll do that later. Just check if we're not exceeding 200 words. You can go up to 210, but better to keep it around 180 to 200. Okay, so I am asking about volunteering opportunities at this community center. One thing you want to do for all questions is imagine a scenario. So I'm going to think that this is a community center where I can help old people. Okay, when you imagine that place and this situation, you're going to be able to come up with points much better. So the purpose I'm writing today is to inquire about the volunteering opportunities offered at your community. Center. Okay, that's it. That's the intro paragraph. What you do in the intro is just mention the purpose, why you are writing. Now, let me think, because in the body paragraphs, I'm going to do these points, and I, I have to make sure that I address the task response and the structure. So what I'm going to do for that is for each body point or each bullet point, I'm going to come up with two sentences or two clauses that will ensure that I'm not missing anything and I have answered the bullet point fully. It's not going to be too much. It's not going to be too less. Let's have a look at this bullet point again. Quick note, everybody, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away a free self up material. All you got to do is comment down below, like the video. Lucky winners will be chosen, contacted, and you will get this material for free. Mention your interest in volunteering and any specific areas you're interested in. So mentioning my interest already is one point and the specific areas would be the other point that that has been given to me in a basket here. So I'm just going to use that we won't have to think about making the two points. And let's get started here. This is going to be my next paragraph or body one. Mention my interest. Um, I am Yeah, that's just going to be I am uh, simple words. I am highly interested. Now, I'm not going to use the word interest. You got to paraphrase from what is in the question. So I am quite keen to volunteer as I have everything you say should have reasoning. Why? So if you say you're keen to volunteer, why? As I have, um, if I say some extra time, it's like I'm degrading volunteering. So I have a lot of uh, spare time on my hands, which I would 
like to make use of, okay? Next, again, I'm not thinking that sentence is long. I'll come back, check the grammar later. Let me just construct my sentences because I don't want to get my points out of my head right now. My second point has to relate with the specific area that I'm interested in. So specifically, I would like to volunteer. Okay, got to remove that because you have volunteering. Volunteer, just saw that, so should not repeat words. I would like to invest my time in helping the seniors you have in building, or since it's, since it's an official building, building C. Something like this just makes it specific and real as if it's a real scenario. And here we have I and I. So I'm thinking, can I change it? Not yet, because I feel this is appropriate. Um, I also have a word specifically, so it's not like a sentence. Every sentence starts with I. If I have a third sentence starting with I, that's a problem, because I need to keep a range. So for now, so far, we're good. Let me revise. I'm quite keen to volunteer as I have a lot of spare time on my hands, which I would like to make use of. I'm going to put a comma here before which because it's a long sentence. Specifically, good connector, I would like to invest my time in helping the seniors you have in building C. So you got one sentence for this one, one sentence for this one, you got two points. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to jump to body two. Request details about the available opportunities, schedules, and requirements. So you have three things here, but you cannot have three sentences because that'll just exceed the word limit. It's always good to be conservative with the word limit, and later you can add words. It's hard to remove words. So I'm going to try to talk about opportunities in one sentence, and schedules and requirements, I can put that in another sentence. So here's how I would do this. Let's go to this body and it's requesting details. So I'm not going to use the word I want to know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use passive voice to give a range. It would be appreciated. It would be appreciated if you can enlighten me on possible opportunities of going to, not third world, that might be offensive. Let's say developing countries where you offer additional services to seniors. Okay, so that is me asking about the opportunities, simple. Next, in one sentence, I got to ask about the schedules and the requirements. So I'm going to use the connector, moreover. Um, scheduled re requirements, they're two very different things. So maybe we can phrase it this way. Let's start with schedules and see where the sentence goes. Moreover, any details on the schedules schedules of your operations will be much appreciated along with any potential requirements. Okay, so one was requirements, one is schedule. I have asked both questions. Perfect. You can see I always go back on top just to verify if I am on track, if I'm answering the bullet points as, they, as they're phrased. Okay, that's important for a task response. It would be much, it would be appreciated if you can enlighten me on possible opportunities of going to developing countries where you offer additional services to seniors, making sure we, pair, we proofread it. Moreover, so you have a good connector. Any details on the schedules of your operations will be much appreciated along with any potential requirements. Now, I have the word appreciated here and then appreciated here. So I'm going to change this. You don't want to repeat the same words. Let's see what else we can do. Details on your operations will be, uh, will be helpful. Helpful is kind of a basic word. Highly regarded is too advanced. Like we're not saying we respect it too much. Will be um, okay, let's let's do this. Will help a lot along with any potential requirements. Uh, you know, there's just appreciated that I can think of. Any details on your schedules on the schedule of your operations will be appreciated, will be admired, will be adorned. The synonyms are not working here. So what else can we say? Okay, you know what? Let's change the sentence because I got to do one more thing here that I am, I've am i been looking to do since the start. Moreover, I need to do something that's up your operations will help me plan my activities better. And here's my magic trick, which is going to be part of the checklist later on semicolon okay moreover any schedules of your operations will help me 
plan my activities better. Plus, please let me know about the, so you had schedules and requirements, about any potential requirements. Let me just read my sentence and then I'll explain to you what I have tried to do here. Moreover, any details on the schedules of your operations will help me plan my activities better. Plus, please let me know about any potential requirements. So what I've done here is use a semicolon. Semicolons are the first thing that I'm going to tell you here. For a 9 to 10, you need good grammar, you need perfect vocab, you need everything good. But you have to have at least three advanced elements. Semicolons are one of the three advanced elements and you need to use at least one semicolon to show that you're capable of using advanced punctuation. So I've used that here and what that does is it breaks this sentence into two parts. The first part is highlighted before the semicolon and this is the second part. So it separates the sentence into two parts plus it helps me do a connector here, helps me with the flow and I just could not find anything that I could use to replace appreciate and you could, you could keep it, it's fine, but it, it, it is here and it's better to paraphrase, it's better to always use unique wordings. So if I couldn't and the synonyms were not working, I just changed the whole thing. Even though I was planning to use semicolon in body 3, that's fine, I'm going to use it here. Let's go to body 3 and this is about expressing your enthusiasm for getting involved and ask about the next steps. Okay, now let's build a flow. So we went from you're keen about this and then you want to know about the schedules and operations. Now you're going to talk about your enthusiasm. Uh, we're going to use the word on top of that, the phrase. And this is a connector different from moreover, specifically, and plus, because all those connectors that I just showed you are one-worded connectors. So now we're using multiple words as a connector to show the examiner that we have range. Now again, I'm going to express my enthusiasm for getting involved. That's already going to be one point, one sentence, and the next steps is going to be the next sentence. Simple. Two sentences per body is what we're aiming for. Now I'm going to say enthusiasm. So what can I say? Maybe I can say I am, uh, I've been fascinated, but that's too much for volunteering. I've been always keen or enthusiastic. Enthusiastic would be the same word that I'm going to copy. Passionate is a good word. On top of that, I have always been passionate about community service. Hence, this opportunity opportunity is right up my alley. Idiomatic expressions, the more you use them, the better, but don't overdo them and don't use idioms use idiomatic expressions. There is a difference. I have covered that in another, in another video here on our channel. You can check that out. AZ Education, idiomatic expressions. I'm sure you'll find it. Next thing is asking about the next steps. So this I could use the word finally. Let's see if that sounds good in terms of flow. On top of that, I have been passionate about community service. Hence, this opportunity is right up my alley. Finally, yeah, that makes perfect sense as we're concluding. Finally, I would love to know about the next steps. How can I say that better? Finally, any details on the next steps would be appreciated. Too much appreciated. What else can we use? Um, whenever you get a chance, kindly email me regarding the next steps. So that's good because we have used that I want to know, I'm keen to, it would be appreciated. But here if I say whenever you get a chance, so here you're adding a different phrase. It's a different range that you're showing the examiner. Whenever you have a chance, please email me regarding the regarding the next steps. How do you say next steps better? Regarding the um, next steps, the other steps we have to take, the other measures. In terms of next steps, hmm. uh, please email me regarding the upcoming steps I need to take care of on my end. Just make a comma there just for a pause on my end. So just to not copy the same words, it's always better if you paraphrase them. Let me review my body three. On top of that, I've always been passionate about community service, hence the opportunity is right up my alley. Finally, whenever you get a chance, please 
email me regarding the upcoming steps I need to take care of on my end. Perfect. Let me just see my word limit because I want to make sure I am not going to overdo the conclusion because that's the next paragraph. We got 154 words. That's perfect. Now we're going to do our conclusion and wrap this up. I like to end around 180 words and that's always a complete answer with enough task response. Now, I am looking forward to hearing from you. It's usually people saying looking forward to hearing from you. That is too casual and informal. Keep it professional. So I am looking forward to your response, just so it's not look, looking forward to hearing from you because that's very basic. Everybody can use that. Looking forward to hearing your po uh, looking forward to your positive response. Uh, full stop. If you require anything from my end, feel free to reach out. That's it. And then yours sincerely plus your, by the way, comma, and then your full name, Bob Martin, which is not my name. Just make it up. Now we're at 178 words. Perfect. I started by saying that it's best to go around 180 to 200, so it's almost 180, and we finished at 178. What time is it? It's about 15, about 16 minutes into this video, but minus all the time I talked, you can easily finish this within 10 minutes. Now, you, you have double the time, by the way, more than that time. And you can see we have almost, well, not almost, we have five paragraphs and one, almost 180 words. And I'll tell you some things here. One is, if you have seen how I did my body paragraphs, you must have noted I did one body per bullet point and then you have your intro and conclusion. So in total, you have five paragraphs in total, and that is the structure for a self writing task one. The other thing is your intro directly starts off with the purpose. You don't mention your name unless you're asked to. The question is not asking you, don't bother. Then your conclusion is a generic conclusion. However, generic in terms of the conclusion needs to wrap up the whole idea without saying very common words that everybody is gonna use. And then your salutations start and at the at the start and at the end mr alexander and your full name at the end throughout this answer i was shouting out my thoughts i was saying okay how can i say this better how can i not use the same word how can i rephrase it okay i did this let me just revise the sentence and then change this let me proofread it you see me doing that throughout i was also talking to myself about the structures and the connectors, I was saying, okay, let me use this connector because I used these ones already. Let me change my phrasing because I did this phrasing before. So I was always looking for advanced stuff and that was on purpose because those are the things that you need to be asking yourself as well when you write this answer to make sure you're hitting all the requirements. Now let's have a look at our checklist. Did I get enough done for advanced vocab? And why I say this is because a lot of times people have the perfect grammar, perfect spelling and everything, and still they're unable to reach a 9 or 10. If you do these three things though, you will add more complexity in your writing that'll ensure that you actually reach above that 9 mark because you need something advanced to show off to the examiner. So one thing was semicolon, showing your use of advanced punctuation. The other thing is connectors, and we I don't even need to go up. I was discussing them throughout. We have good connectors here, 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 and in other places too. Whenever you get a chance, you use connectors and a range of connectors. So you have a connector here with an adverb, then you have a lot of connectors here with one-worded connectors. This one is in the middle of the sentence, which is good. And this is a phrase that is being used as, as a connector. So you have a good range. And the last thing you wanna do is a complex sentence. One to two are enough. Complex sentences are sentences where you have more than one point in one sentence. So one complex sentence you can see right away is here, hence, so before hence and after hence, you have a clause. That is a complex sentence. When sentences start with if, you're breaking it down into two points. If you require anything from my end, and then the next clause is this one. So you got two there. That's enough. There's two complex sentences already. If you look around more, like this one is also complex, you will find more. But at least two, I got that in there. So let's have a look at our checklist one more time. We got a semicolon, we got connectors throughout, and we got at least one to two complex sentences. Now that throws in complexity in your writing and it shows range. And then you have good task response, good answer overall, no grammar mistakes, and everything looks good. In just 10 minutes, you can write this whole thing and get a nine to 10. And a lot of people struggle with that. So remember, you're not following the right structure 
tone or strategies or not asking yourself the right questions if you're struggling. And again, if you are struggling, check out our SELPA 15 hour course in the description. It guarantees your scores. And right now it's at a 20% discount. So the link is in the description. Check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Please also like, share and subscribe. We'll talk very soon. Take care.